a US destroyer and several commercial ships operating in the Red Sea came under drone and ballistic missile attacks. And this is according to the U.S. military as it marks the most significant escalation of a weeks-long military attack on ships operating in those waters. Now, according to American officials, the USS Kearney, a Navy destroyer, struck a drone that was in the direction of the ship. They say it was launched from a Houthi-controlled part of Yemen. At roughly the same time, the Unity Explorer, a Bahamas-flagged UK-owned and operated bulk cargo ship, came under a ballistic missile attack that landed near the ship. The commercial ship sent a distress call and the Kearney moved towards the ship in response. In a statement, the Yemeni armed forces confirmed the attack, saying it launched a missile towards the Unity Explorer and a drone at another commercial cargo ship, saying that the ships were Israeli and that attacks on the country's vessels would continue until the Israeli aggression against their brothers in the Gaza Strip does not stop. And to talk more on the latest developments, we're now being joined by Charles Kupchin, who is the Senior Director for European Affairs on the staff of the National Security Council, NSC, in the Barack Obama administration. Thank you so much for joining us and beyond, Mr. Kupchin. Good to be with you. Right now, Mr. Kupchin, the situation is only worsening as we speak. Around 700 Palestinians have been killed in the last 24 hours. Israel has announced that it is expanding its ground operations in the whole of Gaza Strip, while Hamas has been staunch uh, that there will be no talks until bombing on the Gaza Strip stops. How do you assess the current situation in Gaza? Uh, do you think that there will be any sign of the truce restarting now? Well, I think now that we have seen the fighting begin again, it will likely continue mm. for another significant amount of time. Both the Israelis uh, and Hamas are claiming that they were the ones responsible for uh, letting this truce lapse. Apparently, Hamas didn't come forward with the names that they had promised. But the bottom line here is that Israel has moved from attacking positions in the northern part of Gaza to the southern part of Gaza. It has been trying to distribute various kinds of instructions about where civilians can go to get safe haven. But clearly, civilians are continuing to suffer and to die. We heard talk of some kind of safe zone along the Mediterranean Sea in the south of Gaza, unclear whether civilians are moving there and, and if they do move there, whether they will be safe. So unfortunately, I think we're entering what will be another very significant period of bloodshed and fighting now spreading from north to south. More bloodshed and more fighting. Uh Sir, I also wanted to get your opinion on this, just taking further from your first answer. Now, there are renewed calls to protect the civilians in Gaza. Now, with the IDF launching this next stage of attacks, they've gone through northern Gaza, now it's southern Gaza. When they were attacking northern Gaza, civilians were asked to move towards the south. Now that they're attacking southern Gaza, where do the civilians go and is there any chance of another truce? Well, it's a, it's a great question because they can't turn around and go back to the north mm. because many of the places that they would go to mm. have been destroyed, homes, apartment buildings, schools, UN centers. So clearly the, this is a, a worsening situation. The humanitarian crisis gets worse. Hospitals are running out of fuel, of medicine and equipment. No question that behind the scenes, the United States, Egypt, Qatar, other parties are working hard to get another truce. Given the dynamics in Israeli politics, I don't think you'll see another truce until there is more degrading of Hamas leadership, more degrading of the Hamas military infrastructure. Israel talks about eliminating Hamas. I don't think that is a realistic war aim because Hamas is a social movement as well as a military organization. So unfortunately, I think we're going to see it a few more weeks of fighting, more death and destruction before we get another significant pause in an effort to end the fighting. Right, Mr. Kupchin, uh, 
speaking of the recent attack by Yemen's Houthis on commercial vessels in the Red Sea, talk to us about the growing maritime tensions in the West Asian region. Well, you know, there, there are no silver linings to the war that has broken out between Israel and Hamas. But there is, I think, a reason to be uh, somewhat welcoming of the news that the war has not spread significantly. Yes, we see Hezbollah in Lebanon lobbing missiles into northern Israel. Yes, there has been some exchange of fire between U.S. forces and Iranian proxies in Syria. But the only place where we're, we're seeing escalation is in and around the waters off the coast of Yemen, where the Houthis have launched uh, missile strikes, drone strikes, apparently against a, uh, um, a ship, uh, a civilian cargo, and as well as a, a U.S. warship. I don't think that one can expect to see a significant escalation, given the distance of Yemen from Gaza. I think one the key here is that uh, Iran seems to be holding back. Iran is the puppet master here. Mm. It's the party that is supporting Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, Syrian militias. Mm. So far, the Iranians don't look like they're edging toward a fight with Israel. But clearly, we need to keep an eye on that. And that's one of the reasons the U.S. has warships off the coast to deter Iran and to deter Iranian proxies from widening the war. Well, uh, there have not been too many incursions beyond uh, the boundaries of Israel and uh, Gaza as far as the war is concerned. But again, there are no silver linings in this ongoing war between the two sides. And here's hoping there's going to be peace at the earliest. Thank you so much for joining in, sir. That was Mr. Charles Kupchin joining us on World DNA.